Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we have discussed uh, what are the factors affecting uh, financial crisis and we had discussed five key points and the remaining one uh, is the fiscal government fiscal imbalances. And this point is more relevant for country, developing countries and emerging uh, market economies. So after completing discussing this point, then we will see the theoretical framework or the structure uh, of how uh, the, the sequence of events in the uh, financial crisis in general. So coming to the uh, this part, the government fiscal imbalances, especially when uh, government deficit happen, that means government deficit, you know, uh, that is nothing but the borrowing requirements of the government when the government expenditure uh, is greater than the government revenue, right. So as a result, you know that when the fiscal deficits keep on increasing uh, over time, uh, then you know that most governments, they finance, they raise the fund uh, in order to cover up the fiscal deficit is borrowing from the market. And for borrowing from the market means mainly by issuing bonds, right. So that means if the government fiscal deficit uh, keep on increasing, uh, that means they will be supplying more and more bonds in the market uh, and there will be a fear, uh, it will be keep on increase, a fear will be popping up in a way that there will be, there is high possibility for default on government bonds. So normally we believe that government bonds are uh, low risk, low risk bond that the default risk is very low. But especially in developing countries and other emerging market economies, when this fiscal deficit keep on increasing, there is a fear of default on government bonds. It happened in several many countries as well. Uh, that means they were unable to pay back the uh, debt that they raised through the bonds market. So especially emerging economies like Argentina, Brazil, Ecuador, Turkey, uh, these countries uh, especially face these kind of problems. So as a result, let us see what is going to happen uh, if there is uh, increase in fiscal deficit that the government fiscal imbalances happen. So obviously you know that when uh, there is uh, this fear that means government borrowing is increasing, their government is keep on supplying more and more bonds in the market and sometimes and the individual demand for government bonds may fall. Right. So the individual, the individual investors and institutional investors also, uh, they will uh, respond by decline in the demand for uh, government bonds. That means in another way, the riskiness of government bonds increases and in one of the session we have seen that when the riskiness of bonds increases, so any particular bonds increases, is demand decline, right. So individual demand, institutional uh, demand for government bonds decline. Then in this case, government may force financial institutions to purchase them. Especially in many developing countries, they have public sector banks, public sector financial institutions and they will be forced to purchase the government bonds. Then you know that uh, as a result because if the these institutions are forced to purchase uh, government bonds, that means that may not be their uh, right investment uh, of a decision, right? That may not be their, uh, their correct portfolio uh, allocation of their resources. So sometimes they may be, they may have to dis distribute uh, their fund in a way that uh, they have to meet liquidity, profitability, uh, all these factors, all these parameters they have to uh, fulfill. But if they are forced to invest more in government bonds, then you obviously you know that uh, that may not be their right investment decision sometime. And then as a result, uh, you know, the balance sheets of banks will start deteriorating. So now uh, recall what we have studied in the previous class uh, session that means when the balance sheets of banks deteriorate then you know that the bank's net worth, bank's net worth will be declining and this will lead to the problem of adverse selection, uh, adverse selection and adverse selection and moral hazard problem, right. 
this will lead to poisoning of adduce selection and moral hazard problem that is one and second one is if there is fear of uh, default of government bonds uh, foreign investors uh, they also normally in general they also do invest in government bonds uh, or government bonds of other countries suppose india's fiscal deficit suppose is keep on increasing then obviously you know that um, those who are has invested in india's government bonds indian government bonds uh, they will pull back their money uh, that means uh, capital outflow capital outflow uh, will happen right capital outflow will happen that is one so that means who are had invested in indian government bonds uh, if they fear that there is high probability the, the probability uh, of uh, default risk is increasing default risk is there and they will they will pull out their money they will withdraw their money and they will take back the money back to their home country for example the us investor right then similarly when normally what is expected capital inflow uh, capital inflow that also will decline that means is both are in one way, same meaning one means who are invested they will take it out uh, similarly what are the expected capital inflow that also will come uh, they come down that means who are supposed to invest make a new investment in indian government bonds that also will uh, decline so what would happen as a result you know that as a result uh, because of this when there is as a result of all of all of this you know that the demand for uh, indian money indian currency uh, demand for domestic currency decreases right Do demand for domestic currency uh, decreases so this decreases so as a result you know that uh, exchange rate uh, depreciation will happen right exchange rate uh, depreciation uh, depreciation will happen so increase fiscal deficit uh, so as a result of exchange rate depreciation uh, you know what will happen finally uh, when the is, that is one similarly uh, before that one more point because of increase fiscal deficit there will be a downgrade of sovereign ratings as well uh, so that means uh, when one of the parameter that normally used for the credit rating agency sovereign rating agency is the uh, fiscal deficit when the fiscal deficit increase uh, they downgrade the sovereign ratings that the government's rating will be, will be downgraded and as a result again the same things which i mentioned here the decline in capital inflow will happen so the further outcome will be that the demand for domestic currency will decline and exchange rate uh, will decline exchange rate will decline this also will uh, this will decrease uh, so that means when the exchange rate depreciates suppose initially one dollar is equal to 70 rupees and suppose due to this when one dollar is uh, suppose 90 rupees a depreciation and then you know that as a result uh, many firms who have borrowed from uh, abroad uh, that means borrowed in from foreign currency uh, their repayment burden the debt burden increases right now they have to pay more amount because the exchange rate is depreciated uh, both the principal and the interest income interest payment the burden of debt payment repayment increases that means again the balance sheet it will affect the net worth of the firm right again again the problem is here if the as a result of exchange rate depreciation their debt servicing that cost increases that means liability increases when liability increases net worth increases that means the these firms many firms who have borrowed from abroad uh, they will be more vulnerable uh, to the uh, problem of adverse selection and moral hazard so this is one of the reason how this would lead to the government fiscal imbalances how this would lead to the financial crisis this is stage one in fact actually in the initiation of financial crisis so that means the um, uh, it how further effect the net worth of the firms uh, when it affects the firms affect uh, then you know that the asset market effects uh, this kind of things would happen here it will affect the the asset side of the firms and as a result we can see that uh, this will lead to financial crisis so we have discussed several points here particularly we can see that six factors we have discussed so maybe actually most time either of these or many of these uh, will be happening simultaneously or alone or uh, simultaneously uh, happening so any of this can happen any of this uh, can uh, lead to uh, it can be the seed for financial crisis maybe asset market effects we can see that if there is a supply side shock that the uh, energy price that the supply side shock for example the increase in the price of oil 
so that means that would affect the automobile sector and especially and the consumer uh, industry who are is producing the, the consumer goods and services and they also will get affected uh, you know that because of that their their sales their uh, level of uh, the volume of uh, sales will decline because the co increase in the cost of production and as a result you know that the dividend will decline and their stock price will decline and this will lead to uh, asset market effects and maybe due to increase in interest rate maybe due to some changes policy sometimes sometimes due to maybe an unintended consequence of uh, monetary policy uh, maybe suppose uh, when they, they they say that there is inflation and as a result if they reduce the money supply then interest rate can increase or maybe this or some of the uh, factor aspects and similarly balance sheet of a bank maybe uh, suppose government asks the firms to make prioritized lending then as a result they may have more NPS and then there will be a deterioration in the institution's balance sheet, banking crisis. So, what the all these fact is, either of these things can happen, it can lead to financial crisis. Actually, these kind of things are happening often. Uh, but what the thing is that maybe it may be minor, maybe immediately uh, the policy makers recognize it and they do some uh, policy intervention, then it will be neutralized. So, these kind of things are happening. But when it uh, out of control, when it becomes significant, considerable, uh, then that leads to a uh, financial crisis. So, these are the factors that we discuss here. So, in addition to this, the asymmetric information problem that we had discussed in the previous classes, sessions, uh, that the conflict of interest that is happening in the investment banking, uh, auditing firm, rating agencies, these actually add further fuel to the financial crisis in addition to the factors whatever that we uh, covered uh, until now. So, in addition to this, the uh, conflict of interest and asymmetric information problem that also uh, plays a crucial role. Actually, the 2007-8 crisis, there is in fact this conflict of interest also played a crucial role uh, in aggravating the problem. Uh, now, after discussing the factors that will affect uh, affecting the financial crisis, uh, let us now see what are the sequence of events in a financial crisis. Here, we are going to develop a theoretical framework to understand the dynamics of financial crisis. So, here we will see what are the stages that is stage 1 by including the factors that we discussed. How uh, this will lead to uh, that means uh, how the financial crisis uh, it starts. So, that is the, uh, the main uh, objective in this session we will be covering and in the next session we will cover to apply this framework to understand the crisis financial crisis of 2019-29 and or more elaborately of 2007-8 uh, crisis. So, there are the dyn dynamics of financial crisis, uh, we can uh, classify, you know, put it into three stages. Uh, in the stage one, we can call it the initial phase. Mainly, there are two ways uh, in which a financial crisis can start. One is called uh, credit boom and burst. This is mainly because the mismanagement of financial liberalization or liberalized uh, innovation uh, leading to asset price and burst. So, in this point, uh, mainly we will be discussing how uh, financial innovation or when countries engage in financial uh, liberalization, uh, that means the elimination of restrictions on financial market and institutions are happening. That means the particularly when introduce the economy uh, introduces new types of loans or financial products which is known as financial innovation that in fact uh, eliminates uh, many of the uh, financial market restrictions in fact. So, in the long run what is going to happen that uh, in the long run financial liberalization promotes uh, financial development and encourages a well run a financial system that allocates capital uh, effi capital efficiently, but in the short run we are going to see that is going to create some negative effect. So, before we discuss this fact, uh, let us see what are the other stage and a stage 2 is considered as banking crisis and stage 3 is uh, debt inflation. So, let us see stage 
to one. Uh, as I mentioned here, financial innovation uh, is a one of the response to avoid uh, restrictions and uh, regulations. In the long run, is going to benefit the economy because anyway, these are all innovations. So in the long run, we can see that we can anticipate that uh, capital will be used more efficiently. But in the short run, it can prompt financial institution to go on a lending spree called a credit boom. So that means the dark side of financial liberal liberalization is that it can prompt financial institution to go on lending spree. Uh, that means lenders may not have the expertise or the incentives to manage risk appropriately in these new lines of business. And even with the proper management, credits boom eventually outspread the ability of institutions and government regulators to screen and monitor credit risk and lending leading to overly uh, risky lending. So as a result, what is going to happen? After a period of time, uh, eventually uh, the losses on loans begin to mount, right? Because when they are making loans to new lines and even giving loans to high default risk, that the high risk uh, uh, in individuals and institutions. And eventually, you know that uh, losses on loans begin to mount and the value of the loans and thereby driving down the net worth uh, of the bank and other financial institutions. So, simply we can say that when uh, loans increases, when NPS increases, then the net worth of the bank will decline. So, obviously, bank will respond to cover up this loss and you know that as a result, uh, many is the ratio, the capital adequacy ratio, livery ratio, uh, all this will get adversely affected and then with the less capital, what they will do? Uh, these financial institutions cut back on their lending to borrower spenders, a process called uh, deleveraging. So, they started because they realized that they are making losses on their loans. So, they try to cut back on their lending to borrower spenders. So, which is a process called uh, deleveraging. So, as a result, the flow of fund in the financial system start declining. So, similarly, another related thing is that as a result, there will be asset price boom and burst. So, when the price here as a result, when the prices of assets such as equity shares and real estate can be driven by investor psychology, uh, that means the investment made by people uh, is not, not based on uh, the fundamental uh, economic values, the economic fundamentals of that firm or the sector, instead that it will be driven more by the investor psychology maybe because of uh, mostly uh, incentivized by the financial innovations as well and then their values based on the realistic expectations of the assets of future income stream that is based on their expectation based on that expectation they will be making uh, investment so as a result sometimes the value the rise of asset price above their fundamental economic values uh, is an asset price bubble so actually asset price bubble happen here uh, because when the price is uh, above, when the market price of an asset is above uh, their economic fundamentals, then you know that when the market price of an asset is above the fundamentals and after certain point of time, obviously, there will be a burst of this bubble, right? When the bubble burst and asset price realign uh, with the fundamental economic values and then stock and real estate price tumble, companies see their net worth. Uh, that is dropped. Again, they see that their net worth has uh, declines. So, then you obviously again you know that this asset price decline uh, because of their this is the asset price boom in the beginning and it, when it burst then the asset price um, asset price decline asset price decline this will lead to decline in the net worth of the firm and then the firms will be uh, more vulnerable to again uh, the asymmetric information problem that is uh, adverse selection and moral hazard. In addition to this, there will be increase in uncertainty in the economy also prompt to uh, prompt um, uh, in the initial phase. That means just after the start of a recession, uh, suppose a crash in the stock market or the failure of major financial institution, uh, that would increase the level of uncertainty in the economy. So, as a result, if there is more and more uh, uncertainty in the economy, uh, when the uncertainty is more, then th when uncertainty is high, then information will be very hard to come by in a period of high uncertainty, then this will lead to 
financial friction that the financial friction increase and which would further lead to the again as we mentioned that when the financial friction increase uh, the asymmetric information problem uh, will increase aggravate and which will reduce lending and economic activity. So, these are all the uh, factors that more normally uh, happen in the uh, stage 1 of a financial crisis. Then coming to stage 2, so before going to stage 2, uh, this is a framework uh, that we discuss here. So, here the, this is the stage 1, the stage 1 is this, uh, stage 2 is banking crisis, uh, then stage 3 is bank deflation. What we discuss so far is, uh, if there is uh, because of the financial innovations, uh, what are the point that we discuss here? The financial innovation, uh, this is going to lead to credit boom, uh, but after certain point of time, there will be asset price decline uh, because of the uh, burst in the uh, asset bubble. Then this would lead to deterioration in the bank financial institutions balance sheet. Similarly, another point that we discussed that the increase in uncertainty, uh, this also, uh, this will directly lead to uh, aggravating the problem of adverse selection and moral hazard problems. So, coming to this part, when this was the first part, the asset price decline, then this will lead to deterioration in financial institutions balance sheet, then the net worth of the firm decline and then as a result again, uh, the problems of asymmetric information, uh, this problem get worsened. So, two ways, one is asset price and uh, uncertainty. Finally, all this lead to uh, aggravating the adverse selection problem. Then this will lead to further tremor in the economy in the system because of this uh, the, the, the will the economy will enter into the second stage uh, which is mainly uh, a kind of uh, mainly characterized with the uh, banking crisis so banking crisis what we can see that uh, due to the deteriorating balance sheets and tougher business condition leads some financial institutions into insolvency uh, which happens when their uh, net worth becomes negative. So, here many firms who have borrowed from the bank, they are unable to pay off their loans. Uh, then as a result, you know that uh, the banks, uh, banks will be ending with uh, many NPS, non-performing assets because many firms are uh, because of their uh, financial condition deteriorate they may not be able to pay back their loans so as a result banks nps increase that means banks net worth again here banks net worth declines so what would happen if the uh, banks net worth declined as we have seen in the previous session that means some banks uh, they won't be able to pay off the depositors or other creditors then some uh, they'll go out of business so let us discuss this point uh, this point in detail that banking crisis so that means when financial institution uh, into insolvency uh, then what we say that many firms they will be unable to pay off uh, depositors and then as a result uh, you know that the bank panic um, in which multiple banks fail simultaneously happens right this is the point that we have seen in the one of the previous session that exactly happened here that means bank panic will happen that means people will be running to bank uh, in order to withdraw uh, their uh, deposit because uh, again the asymmetric information problem is there uh, they cannot really uh, distinguish which bank is good and which bank is bad here bad risk here so in this case this is having a contagion effect source of this contagion is nothing but uh, asymmetric information and adding further fuel to this you can see that uh, when Many banks see that there is a deposit outflow from their bank. So, as a part of their liquidity management, uh, in order to pay back uh, their deposit, uh, they will engage in banks' uh, distressed asset sell, sale. That means they engage in a asset sell that is nothing but banks' distressed asset sell off, uh, which quickly to raise the necessary funds. So, what would happen as a result? Because they are suddenly selling, they are making a distress sale of uh, their assets. So, these fire sales of asset will uh, further cause damage. That means, it may further co may cause their prices to decline so much that more banks become insolvent. Because they are suddenly, they, if you they want to, they are selling in a distress condition, then you know that distress sale, obviously you know that uh, oversupply of assets and obviously the buyers also will doubt what all their assets, maybe most of their assets will be loan, loan resale, uh, then the loan resale, they will be getting less value.
right the price they are getting also will be very very less and they will be eventually ending up with lots of loss and then finally this will lead to becoming banks insolvent and resulting contagion can then lead to multiple uh, bank failures and a full fledged uh, uh, bank panic so this would lead to banking crisis aggravating the banking crisis then uh, you know that this sequence of events if you uh, read it in proper line we can see that there will be fewer banks operating as a result uh, if there are only information only information about the credit worthiness of borrower spenders disappears right and increasingly severe adverse selection and moral hazard problems in financial markets deepen the financial crisis and causing declines in asset prices and the failure of firms throughout the economy uh, that lack funds for productive investment opportunities so this is actually the full fledged uh, in the second stage to uh, financial crisis will be characterized with a full fledged uh, banking crisis now let us move to the third part uh, in the stage 3 here actually in the second stage we have seen this one that banking crisis and this again lead to further aggravate the moral hazard problem adverse selection problem then overall the lending declines when the lending declines then uh, the productive sec the sectors which can make the best use of capital uh, they will be having a deficiency of capital uh, it will be very expensive for them to borrow and whoever is remaining in the market bankers they will be charging high interest rate then as a result overall uh borrowing will become costly and as a result the economic activity will decline so when the economic activity declines we can see that there is the the, the declining gdp uh, declining employment and overall uh, economy is moving to a kind of uh, recessionary stage then this will lead to entering into the third stage that is called uh, debt uh, deflation so here in the debt deflation we are going to see that unanticipated decline in price level so let us see how this would create problem so because of the economic downturn uh, there will be debt deflation debt deflation means again the further deterioration in firms net worth because of the increased burden uh, of indebtedness so the substantial decline in borrowers net worth in real terms happen here and it creates it creates uh, increase in adverse selection and moral hazard problems for uh, lenders and the point here is that the debt deflation mainly uh, it happened because when the economic activity declines uh, when the, then there will be an unanticipated decline in the price level right so, so that, that is the important point here we need to see debt debt deflation then as a result uh, when there is unanticipated decline uh, in the price level then you know that debt servicing become expensive the repayment of loan and uh, its interest rate uh, that uh, expenses are uh, increases the burden the debt payment burden uh, increases and this would lead to further lead to borrowers net worth decline in the borrowers net worth in real terms so this again we have seen that the all this would we we had uh, discussed this one multiple times that means uh, decline in net worth leads to uh, worsening of adverse selection and moral hazard problem so in the long run what is going to happen all this lead to in the long run lending and economic activity uh, decline a decline for a long time uh, this is nothing but the stage 3 uh, economy will be uh, ending up with an economic uh, recession economy in a recession that means the volume of economic activity uh, will be a uh, very very low and um, which would lead to uh, overall uh, decline in economic activity that means low gdp uh, low employment etc so these are all the three stages that we uh, just now discuss and in the next session we will apply uh, this framework uh, and all the factors that we had discussed in the previous session to understand the 1929 uh, great depression and 2007 uh, eight uh, financial crisis in detail and thank you and see you in the next session